what the ultimate efficiency is, is around about 30%, is what thermodynamics says you can do with a single junction cell. That's with a smooth spectrum, because this is a calculated thing, so it's taking a smooth spectrum rather than an AM1 with absorption bands. Uh, in practice, crystal silicon has certainly reached 26% in the lab by doing all sorts of things that cost money that probably won't all come out to commercial use. But every time another competitor comes on with a different type of panel or material, the silicon guys can just bring in a slight improvement. But they really are close to the limit now for the cost. Talked about that. I've put that down just for your own interest. Don't need to know it for exam purposes. Uh, just draw your attention to the last three items. Uh, the tandem cells, or the triple junction cells, are ways of trapping more <coughs> of the solar spectrum. If you have one cell on top of another one, they're series connected, so the voltage is better. They've got the same footprint, but one cell can absorb the UV part of the spectrum, and the cell underneath can absorb the other part of the spectrum. So you can arrange it for the energetic part to be absorbed at the top and the less energetic to pass through and be absorbed in the bottom. But the two cells being in series, the thicknesses must be adjusted so that they each generate the same current. It's no good having one generate a lot of current and the other one be very poor. It doesn't work. So doing that um, and having three cells stacked up, you can actually get more than 40% in theory because you've got three cells, not one, but very difficult to achieve commercially. People have tried to do two-step absorption, doesn't actually work well. In theory, it would give a high efficiency. What they do is, for those who are interested, you take a material with a wide band gap and you put some impurity in that has an energy level in the middle. That means that light can then be absorbed in two steps two low energy steps or one big energy step. That does work. But what also happens is the electrons could go down just as easily as up. So when you provide a generation path, you provide a recombination as well. So you have to do a lot of clever things with the engineering to make it work. And quantum wells are in effect a laser diode technology. It's fine for laser scanners, for DVD players, anything where you want a laser, but for a half a metre or a metre square panel, no, you're not going to be able to do that technology. So that's off at the moment. Uh, but having said it, people have done particular layers from compound materials and got high efficiencies by concentrating 200 suns on. That's a picture of them. I want to finish probably on the next one. You'd be pleased to know for this morning. The picture on the left shows some of the improvements are put into crystal cells. Roughen the surface to reduce the reflection. That's easy to do. Take the gridded contact and put it sideways instead of horizontally. That's done. You just cut a groove in with a laser and put the metal down the groove. Just. But actually, it is done. So it is a commercial aspect in many types of cells now. And you can roughen the back surface, and you can put in extra layers. So basically, you can do a lot to reduce the losses. And so these sort of laser groove, buried junctions, and roughened back surface fields are all possible at greater cost. 